Hello everyone, this is Colonel Up, and today we are going to be doing Chapter 4 of Fire Emblem Engage Maddening Mode. Chapter 4 introduces the Fire Emblem Heroes, Weapons, and Bond Rings. So, if you're scummy like me and you have one of these accounts, you can uh, access some of these cool things. We have Alir using Marth, and Vander using the Sigurd Ring. Fram is going to be using the Sharina Ring, while Alfred's using the Anna Ring. Finally, we have Boucheron, who is using the Alphonse Ring. These rings do offer a little bit of stats, as well as allowing you to get SP within the combat. So, at the start of the chapter, we get Selene. Selene is a lord that is basically a mage, and she comes with Selica. Selica is going to be a huge help within this map, and turn one, we're going to see why. So we engage automatically, and we're going to use Echo. So Echo allows us to attack twice. As a Mystic, you get a 60% boost to your damage output when you're using Echo. So, this basically means that we do a little more damage on single hits like that, at the cost of nerfing our attack a little bit. So as long as enemies have low resistance, like they do here, it's pretty easy to beat them down. What? This allows Alir to finish it off without taking a counterattack. Meanwhile, focusing on the bottom, we have Boucheron attacking this Lance Fighter, and then we have Etia finish this off. This is so that we can secure the Javelin Village that's over here and grab the Javelin roughly by turn 3. We're going to have Clan attack this Lance Knight. The Lance Knight is pretty easy for Clan to attack. Even though there was a crit there, the crit did not matter. What would have happened is, is that the Knight would have crashed into Clan and Clan would have finished it off. Afterwards, I felt it would been a while since Fram has given a hug to Alir, so I decided to do that with Changard. It does absolutely nothing here. We put Alfred to where he's going to be attacked by the Axe Cavalier, and then we move Vander up so that he's ready for turn two. On the right hand side we have Chloe and Louis. Louis is going to attack the Archer here, while Chloe is going to attack this Fire Mage that's right over here. She's able to one round this without any issues. I also put her in the range of the Sword Flyer. On the enemy phase, the Hand Axe is going to break Alfred, and then this Sword Flyer is going to break Vander. The thing is, is that this does not matter as far as the break goes, because either one would have broken him. This Lance Knight is going to go into Boucheron, and Boucheron should be able to counterattack, while the Sword Flyer is going to go into Chloe. Finally, we should have this Axe Cavalier move towards Louis and Louis counterattacks while the Sniper, or I should say the Archer, goes into the bushes. Now, from here, we get the Draconic Crystal, which is going to be useful for one particular hit situation, but we'll explain that as we go along. On turn two, we use the Vulnerary with Chloe to keep her healthy. The Mage has a Surge, so it will attack at one range. We would have Clan finish off this Lance Knight here, and then Boucheron and Etier are going to take on the Archer over here on the right hand side. We also get a level up for Clan, but that particular level up does not matter whatsoever. Him having 10 speed, from what I recall, does not change anything in the strategies further ahead. So after Etier finishes that off, we're going to go back up over here to the top left hand corner. We're going to have Alir take out this Hand Axe Cavalier after some weird decision making. I don't know why. I think I was trying to count just to make sure that I could reach the Sword Flyer and I can't. Even though I've done this map too many times, I should know better. So we finish it off. We get a level up here and that at least secures us to level 4 and we get the Hand Axe as well for the next chapter. Now we got to see one of the few small perks of having the Fire Emblem Heroes account. With the Fencilier, we do 16 damage to this Sword Flyer. Why this matters is when we're using Echo, we can finish off the Sword Flyer with Seraphim, as well as taking out this Axe Knight with the Echo Seraphim hit as well. This basically clears everything out from here and allows Vander to charge forward while also protecting him with the Ronin Rao. So, speaking of Vander, we decide to charge him forward and we plop him here to use a Vulnerary. This is important because it helps with getting Rodine properly. Afterwards, I have Fram hug Alir again, but this time she gets to hug another friend. Louis here has to hit a pretty hard hit rate. The thing is, is that this hit rate is, can be reset with the help of the time wheel. So, 
Now we get to the enemy phase. The enemy phase has Rodine attack Vander with the Javelin, while this mage right here will walk up close and Vander is able to counterattack in the process. The Surge mage is going to take, try to take down Chloe, but Chloe is too strong and finishes it off in one round. Meanwhile, Chloe counterattacks the Sword Flyer, and this Axe Cavalier goes towards Celine because she has the least resistance, or should I say the least defense, and Fram chain guards to protect Celine. Now that particular chain guard is actually necessary. So the reason that we need that chain guard is so that Celine can stay at full health. Uh, Fram cannot heal too much, she heals about 12 HP. So we have Boucheron attack this Lance Fighter. And then we have Chloe finish it off. The thing is, the Sword Flyer will not finish off Chloe, and the Lance Fighter is too far away. You can potentially reset the RNs with the Time Wheel to try to get the other Lance Fighter to go the other direction, or if you have Noatun, at the very least, what you can do is Javelin with Chloe, and that should prevent her from being counted, from being attacked. The thing is, is that she cannot die on the next enemy phase, and neither can Vander. We have Louis get the gold here, and now, speaking of Vander, we're going to override right here. The override basically repositions Vander so that he can go into the bush. This allows Celine to warp Ragnarok right in front of the boss. So, the thing is, is with that chain guard, we also need it because the boss normally does 20 damage. So if we've taken any damage, we would be in big trouble. The other thing is, is even though we have fortified defense, it doesn't really matter here because the difference is basically two damage and we're at full health. So what happens here is, assuming conditions are met, the mage goes after Vander first and then Rodine goes after Celine and thus securing the chapter in three turns. So after that is all said and done, this has been Colonel M signing off. Have yourself a good day. Thanks for watching.